Hey guys, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve, and we're talking about Final Cut No. Final Cut No. Final Cut No. Final Cut Compressor. <laughs> compressor, so new versions of Final Cut Motion and Compressor, mostly bug fixes, but there's a new feature in Compressor? Yeah, it's a little thing, but I, you know, I can see myself using it. All right, so enlighten us. All right, so I do a lot of time lapse with my DSLR, and yes. uh, a lot of people out there use their DSLRs for time lapse, and you know, people want to know, how do I turn that into a movie? And in the old days, it was like QuickTime 7 Pro. Yes, import right? the image sequence. And, and you can do it in Final Cut, because I've done under fives on it, but yes. a lot of people don't know you can do that in Compressor, and there's some features in Compressor that are really nice for batch exporting different versions of your of your time-lapse movies. So you're going to do a time-lapse movie in Compressor? Yes. All right, this, is this I want to see. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> so I'm in Compressor, and the first thing you want to do is go to the File menu and choose Add Image Sequence. And it's the first place you want to start. And I'm going to navigate to my um, desktop. Notice there's a folder of uh, basically a time lapse of the Golden Gate Bridge I shot at night. By the way, you just select the whole folder that all the images are in. Okay, you don't need to select the first and last or anything nope. like that, just and the I, folder. Yep, and I've tried this with raw images too. Now, these are JPEGs, but it'll whoops, work with raw. To okay. Totally does. So I'm going to click Add, and instantly I get what's called a job. There's my job. And notice it's select, the job is selected, and I have the job inspector open. And notice all my images show up in the image sequence. So there's all my all the images that constitute my time lapse so movie. Did, did it bring it in as an image sequence? So it's basically yeah. a movie with one image look, per frame. Yeah, look, there it is right there. There's, nice. There's my Golden Gate Bridge at night. Yeah. And I'm just skim, I'm skimming over it as if it was a movie. Nice. But I'm not done yet because the job is, well, it doesn't have a preset yet. And this is where the new feature comes in. Okay. Okay. So one of the things that they've added is 4K support for yes, Apple devices. Yes, and this a is, lot of people are like, wait, Apple devices, 4K? Yeah. What's going on? Well, yeah, so, well. Here we go. Yeah, so I want a 4K version of this to play on my... On your iPad Pro. On my iPad Pro, okay. exactly. So, exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on there, is on the job, and okay, whoop, there it is. Now, you'll notice this ridiculous file name. I. Uh, <laughs> It's a X five hashtags right. meaning the sequence, uh, yeah. the number sequence. I'm going to yeah. show you. If you work with a compressor a lot, I'm going to show you a huge time saver right now. Okay. You should just do this. Go over to the locations uh, button over here. You're going to create what's called a lo custom location. So I'm going to click this plus button. All the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom, mm -hmm. bottom lower, and I'm going to on the desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this SF time lapse. Let's say I did a. I'm planning on outputting a bunch of the Bay Area time lapses or the bridges or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click Create, then click Choose, and you'll notice now SF time lapse is chosen as okay. a location, but Custom I'm not done location. yet. Okay. There's the location inspector over here. By default, it's gonna give the file name source, and that's why you had that weird gobbledy gobbledygook. It's it comes that's from the, the file name. It comes from yeah. the file name, which is, An like I said, sequence. gobbledygook right <laughs> now. So what I'm gonna do is delete that. It's a little I'm gonna, token. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, token. I'm gonna type in bridges, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to add a couple of other tokens in here. I'm going to add a date token, and I'm going to add a, a setting token. And that way I'll, I'll know, it'll say bridges, and when it, when it outputs, I'll know the date, and I'll know what setting was applied. Like, well, I'll know whether it's a 4K iPhone or it's ProRes or whatever. Wow. I, I find it really handy. So that's that. Now, how do I apply that custom location? Well, over here under location, it says source, which means yes. it'll render the movie to where the source Files which you are don't want the movie never. in with all those images. Right. So never. So, <laughs> never. Exactly. So so what I'm gonna do is and click on this source file and I'm gonna say location and look at that. There the is custom my, locations appear now, in the pop-up. Now menu watch there. what happens to the file name. Okay. So the file name changes automatically because that new file name is associated with this custom source location. That's right. Oh, Nifty, okay. huh? That is very, very cool. See, I told you this would be exciting. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You've made compressor exciting. Uh, right. <laughs> right. So I've got this this preset, but I'm not done yet. So I have this preset selected, and notice the inspector changes because notice. On the job, I have the one inspector, and if you yes. select the preset, you get another inspector, one. right? Okay. So I go into video here, and you'll notice here it says frame size up to 3840 by 2160. Mm -hmm. And it's showing what devices are supported. So only these iPhones and only these uh, these devices are supported for 4K, 4K playback. Right. But for example, I say, you know what? I want to go down to 1280, 1920. Now I have or way 1920, more. 1920, 1080. 1920, 1080. Yeah. 
Look at how many more okay, devices. Okay, so no support and more device, exactly. devices. And you probably don't really need 4K to see it on an iPhone. But oh, I do want 4K because this is, iPad a four, Pro. this is a 4K. This title is called 4K <laughs> Time Lapse Workflow. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> so, so if you want to see Steve's work, right. you've got to get a new All device. Right. Exactly. <laughs> now, I'm not quite done yet. There's this really other great feature that I scroll down that's called cropping and padding. This is not 16 by 9 friendly frame you said size. Cropping and padding, right? Cropping and padding. Okay. Yeah, padding is easy for you to say. <laughs> so you'll notice here. Uh, it's that's the that that is not 16 by 9 <laughs> compliant. No, it is not. Check it out. So under cropping, I can go down here and say, look at it, 16 by 9, 178 to one. So as soon as I do that, it'll apply. I'll give it a second. Oops, I I, I did that wrong. I applied it to padding. I'm not going to talk about padding. I only want to talk about cropping. But notice, cropping. Okay. It's, it makes a perfect you know 16, 16 by 9. Yep. You yeah. know, 4K. And assume you could move that around if you wanted it to be a little higher or lower or whatnot. You know what? I have. Hmm. Yeah, or you maybe you you, 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 you have to enter. Uh, you can you can uh, enter uh, values. You, you can, you'd have to do that. You you have to do custom. Okay. You can do. Okay. Yes, you, do you can. But, you have to, but right now, I'm interested in quick output. I just yeah. want to get a quick 16 mine output. I don't care about the bit. Okay. Right now, center I'm just, crop is fine. Like center that. crop mm -hmm. is fine for now. Um, now, the, here's the beauty of compressor. I can certainly output this to play on my nice iPad Pro, but I also want a version to edit with in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go back over to settings, and I have this nice Apple ProRes 422HQ setting. I'm going to drop that right on there, right on the same job. Okay. So now it's going to output two jobs, and I'm going to control click on this and set this location. Same, same location? To same location, yeah. but watch what happens to the file name. Notice it knows this is a different setting, so this uh, one says it's picking for, up the metadata for the the preset. That's right. Uh -huh. That's why I changed the token because now I can easily tell these two apart immediately. Yeah. Immediately nice. when I spit this out. So you've got the one to watch on your iPad Pro and the one to bring into Final Cut, right. and you know what they are. Now in this scenario, for this one, I don't want cropping. I want to bring in the full raster because I want to be able to move it around in Final Cut Pro and drop it into a yes. 1080 timeline. There's, I, I I wouldn't want to crop this one. Yes. But the other one I do, I want to, whatever. Yep. So flex, uh, Compressor gives you a lot of uh, flexibility. So really the last step is just click the start batch and you know, it, go, get a, go get a sandwich. And uh, there it is, it's, it's, um, it's spitting out those two movies. And just so you see that uh, we don't have to wait here for them, I actually have uh, these, let's see here. Those are, those are the ones I'm being rendered out right now. I go into here. These are the rendered ones. Here's the 4K. Here's the 4K version, uh, version uh -huh. for for the iPhone. And then there's the uh, there's the one for the to bring the Final Cut Pro. Uh, yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. So there you have it. There's 4K yeah. time lapse workflow with a new 4K <laughs> preset for the iPhone. And a lot of good tips in and there. A lot that of tips great. in there. Exactly. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Hope you guys like that as much as I did. <laughs> RippleTraining.com. Twitter, Facebook, you know the social media stuff. Check us out, we're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of free content, a lot of great tutorials, so please check us out at rippletraining.com. And we have um, a compressor tutorial too. And we have a compressor tutorial that will take all this information and put it in much more context. So if you're doing a lot of output, you really want to check out compressors, so check that tutorial out. Thank you for watching us here on MacBreak Studio.